Hey everyone, welcome to a Goody Reader comparison video. My name is Michael. My name is Peter. We have here the Nook HD versus the brand new Samsung Galaxy Tab A Nook. Yes. So this is released in 2012 and this was released in last week of 2016. Of August. And what this represents is the absolute brand, the most brand new Nook device, Samsung, but it's Nook branded. And the very last device that Barnes & Noble actually manufactured and made. So what we're going to do is start with the Samsung Nook. You see that it, it basically looks like every other Samsung device ever made, which isn't a bad thing. It's just, it's iconic basically. Samsung logo, front facing camera, flush screen and bezel of course, apps button, home button, back button, micro SD card slot, upgradable to 256 gigabytes, that's massive. You have a micro USB port, a 3.5 mil headphone jack, volume up and down, power button, and um, the back has a camera and a speaker on it. Moving over to the last generation of Nook tablets ever, we have a kind of flush screen and bezel. It lips up about one millimeter, which is like a sixteenth of an inch. You have a Nook button. It actually sticks out. It's really cool. For the home screen? Yeah, for the uh, home screen button. The side has volume up and down. The top has a micro, uh, a 3.5 mil headphone jack. The left has the power button. The bottom has a micro USB and a proprietary Nook plug. The thing about this plug was that you could only get it if you had this tablet. So if you lose it, you have to source one. You can't use a USB. It's very, very aggravating. We were looking for ours today. It has stereo speakers. Yes, this is four years old. There's some ink staining on the back just from being fully used for a thousand days. So um, yeah, stereo speakers in the back was a nice kind of rubbery feel to it. This is a Barnes & Noble skin version of Android. So it looks different than say the vanilla version of Android, which most people these days are probably familiar with. This features a carousel. Still has top dragging, but it is not what you're used to seeing. Nothing is. You have the apps, very, very large. Um, you have the search library is always there. You have the Nook button. It's a raised physical button, and uh, you do still have a little bit of the settings that um, other Android devices will have. But a lot of it is limited, like uh, downloading apps from unknown sources, for example. That's right. Limited. Because Barnes and Noble, when they initially released this tablet, they had the Nook App Store, yes. and they didn't want people sideloading apps or downloading Google Play or the Goodie Reader app store on this. They just wanted you to deal with the Samsung or with the, the, the Barnes & Noble app yeah. store. But Barnes & Noble earlier in the year in 2016 actually closed down their app mm -hmm. store and their video store, which are two main things on this. So those simply don't work anymore. Rendering this basically useless. <laughs> well, you can still like do things like purchase content on here. So, you know, you could definitely, you know, buy things from the Barnes & Noble store. So let's uh, click on two of the, the retail things here, just to show you how that's different. This is the store experience on both of these. So this is more of the Nook simple touch layout, and this is a more of an Android-y, more refined layout. Right, you know? It's not bad by any means, really. It's just... Yeah, it's, it's, it's laid it's out making, differently. Not making good use of the real estate. You see, like... They kind of have this, you know, everything's cut off, kind of indicating that it is a, a carousel, but um, I don't know, it's just not as obviously refined as that. So we had the same ebook loaded on each of these devices, yes. Pride and Prejudice, and we tried to match it up in terms of font size, yeah. font type. That's about as good as we can get. Yeah. You see it says Mrs. Bennett does not seem, Mrs. Bennett does not seem. So they are the same book. So if you tap the center of both of these, you get different font settings. So the font settings are all, they all change live. You can move them up and down as you see fit. You can do margins. You can do line spacing. Everything's nicely laid out on one screen here, which I really like. Whereas this is, you know, you got to go through all these little settings. But you can do them all, no problem. Uh, we can do long presses on both of these, and what that does is gives us an array of different things we can do. You can add notes, highlights, quotes, look up, find, and book. Same things on this one. You can do different colored highlights on the on the Samsung Nook, however. Except the whole thing just refreshed. That's kind of 
inconvenient. And we'll compare the keyboards while we're at it here. Add note. Nothing really to write home about for either of the keyboards. You do get a line of numbers up top on the Samsung device. Same speed, uh, nothing really crazy there. Um, so yeah, they, they both have, uh, oh, this has a nice little page turn animation, see that? That's cool. And this one just has a left to right. Right. And you can't really even buy this anymore. No, and uh, we would recommend if you do see this on eBay or Amazon or a third party website, we would just tell you to kind of avoid it. Only because, like we said, you can't really download any apps on it. And the app store that it does have doesn't work. So you're pretty locked in. Yeah. So this is our thoughts. We're interested to hear yours. Drop a comment below. Let us know what you thought about this comparison. Or if you have this older device and you're happy with it, let us know. Uh, for goodyreader.com and a comparison of the Barnes & Noble Nook HD versus the Samsung Galaxy Tab A Nook. My name is Michael. This is Peter. Everybody take care.